Today's Ask Me Anything goes out to Carlos Cisneros. Hi. Hi. I rescued a dog, Lab Pointer Mix, about four months ago. He was about 11 months at the time and had been very neglected. No training at all. I've been constantly training him and he's responded very well. But there's two things I cannot seem to improve. One, when I leave him alone at home, he destroys our basement couch. I tried walking him before leaving, spray deterrent, tug play, toys, Kongs, and several more, and he plays with them, but still chews on the couch. I have to go to work for about nine hours a day, and I don't want to leave him in a cage. Two, as if one wasn't enough. When walking him outside, if he sees another dog, he lunges at them. Not aggressively, he's very playful and can't control himself. I'm afraid one day he might get run over. If there are no major distractions, he does follow commands very well. So first of all, Carlos, a couple, let's, let, let's look at this. Um, you work nine hours a day. That's a lot, right? And I understand that. I respect that. I think it's great. Um, uh, you said, hope you help me with these issues. I just believe it's a hard, it's hard with him since he, I didn't get him as a younger puppy. That's good. I got Maya as an older dog. Maya ate a couch of mine too. So um, what you're going to need to do on, on this part one is you're going to need to get someone to, you're going to need to create the dog. I mean, I can't, I can't cut it any, any clearer than this for you, but you, you can't leave the dog out. You can't buy a new couch. The dog's going to get into something else. It's going to eat through your drywall. It's gonna, you're going to have a problem with this dog. So if you're going to keep this dog, which I hope you do, then you're going to need to structure the dog, right? And, and what happened with Maya is that if I left her in a smaller area, she destroyed more stuff than if I left her in a large area because she was more frustrated in that area. So I've, I've dealt with this hands-on. I dealt with it personally, so I can tell you what you need to do. You need to create the dog and have someone, either you need to pay someone or you're going to need to buy some you know, gifts for someone, but someone's going to need to come over and get this dog out a couple times a day for a walk. Once, twice, minimum once a day, you know, at the four-hour mark. Um, get the dog out, play with the dog, do something with the dog. I don't know if you have an outside area you can leave the dog in, something. But the dog is going to need to be confined so that this, he stops this bad behavior. Because if you just leave him out, he's, he, there's, you've tried everything. You've tried the toys, you've tried the exercise, you've tried making him tired, you've tried all these things. I'm sure you tried leaving a TV on. If he doesn't eat the TV, you're fine. But you're just getting, you're, you're not going to solve this problem unless you can find the dog in a manner where he can't do it. Maybe there's a daycare near you. Maybe you can put the dog in a daycare or do something like that. Two, walking the dog outside, lunging aggressively. He's trying to be playful, I hope. Um, but you're going to need to get the dog to pay attention to you and, and listen to you and focus on you. That's going to come with training. So working nine hours a day, I think this is really, you, you gotta, you gotta, you, you're in a tough boat here. I don't, I don't know how you're going to fix it. I hope that advice helps you somewhat, but it's, it's a tough one. That's not the Hello, I have a one-year-old German Shepherd. I have a problem with him where he lunges at dogs and people. He mainly barks at people. I want to be able to enjoy my dog and take him out, but I'm worried he will bite someone one day. Please help. And Eunice, you're probably right. He probably will bite someone one day. Now, if you have a one-year-old German Shepherd, I don't know how long you've had him, where you got him, what your background is with him. That's all really going to depend on how we handle the situation. But the dog needs structure, right? The only reason the dog is doing this is because he doesn't respect you or, or wasn't trained or both. And, the, and that will come out because the dog is being protective over you. If he's barking at people, then he is disrespecting you as the leader because he is acting as the leader and he's trying to protect you. The reason dogs, protective dogs, German Shepherds, Rottweilers, Mastiffs, and stuff like that, will bark out at someone else is because they're either afraid or they're being protective. They're telling you something. So um, dogs, they say, are immature wolves. So they tend to, where, where wolves don't bark, young wolf pups bark. But um, dogs are trying to tell you either there's something wrong, they're, they're alerting you to something, or they're acting in a proactive manner, which you don't really want. So the dog will only learn this, and, and, and again, your, your concern about the dog biting someone one day is very, very well, well founded because the dog is showing you a warning signal. She's showing you that he's not obedient, he's not, um, and I hate to use the word submissive to you, but he's not compliant to you, he's, he's acting out where he shouldn't be acting out. So you need to get this dog under control. You need to start with basic obedience. Like, for example, before you take your dog for a walk, the dog should sit at the door and you should go out the door ahead of him. The dog should not be going down the stairs ahead of you. The dog should not be walking ahead of you. Those are all things you need to do. Now, I don't know if you can physically control this dog or not. 
And if you can't, you need to get somebody to help you. But if you can, then you need to control the dog. And the dog needs to be on, I don't know what kind of collar you're using for the dog. You should be on a, a nice slip lead, a choke chain, a prong collar, but you need to learn how to use those tools. To do that, you can go to my website, robertcabral.com. There's tons of videos, as well as on my YouTube channel. Tons of videos to teach you how to properly use a training tool to be more beneficial to your dog. I hope that makes sense to you. I hope you get some training on this dog before he does some damage or before you have to get rid of him. I know it's tough to say, but that's the truth. Uh, Hi, Robert. I already tried to ask you about my American Bulldog. He's only just a year old, and he, he's a quick learner. But his worst behavior is jumping up on people. I tried not to encourage it, but you get people that doesn't mind my dog jumping up. I know you're more into German Shepherds, but how can I stop him jumping up? I do know that young dogs jump up for attention, but I would appreciate if you can advise me how to stop this behavior. So... People always make this assumption that I focus more on German Shepherds, but I focus on all dogs. Right? If you look at my work at the Shelter, you'll see that I focused on almost every breed of dog that's imaginable, and that's for 10 plus years. So, uh, and dogs jumping up, it doesn't matter what the breed is, uh, it, it, dogs, it's the behavior of the dog, of the canine, that's it. It doesn't matter if it's a, it's a toy poodle or it's a Great Dane. The jumping up is jumping up. And the dog is generally doing it to get an engagement out of you, to get attention, to get play, to, to, you know, to, to entice you to play with them. That's just the way they play. So if your dog is doing that, um, the worst thing people do is to encourage it, either by one of two things. They'll either push the dog down and say, stop it, stop it, stop it which in itself is an engagement, or they will uh, let the dog jump up and play with the dog and cuddle the dog and pet the dog. So th both of those are a huge mistake because the dog sees that as engagement. So it can be a negative engagement or it can be a positive engagement. It doesn't matter which one it is. The problem becomes how to solve it. And the only way to solve it is to correct the behavior. Now, correcting the behavior has to be a matter or, or, or something that doesn't create further engagement. So by pushing the dog down or kneeing the dog or anything like that, it, it just encourages the dog to do it further. One of the things I do with dogs, if they do it to me, is I take a step forward into them and the dog gets a very uncomfortable feeling, falls backwards, and usually stops doing it. If it's a very drivey dog, the dog won't stop doing it. I don't like kneeing dogs. I don't like you know, yanking dogs hard for doing it. It can be done. Some people find it effective. I don't like it as much. The best way to, if it's your own dog, to correct the behavior is to put the dog in a crate. When the dog settles down and sees there's somebody here, you know, at the house, <clears throat> then I let the dog out. As long as the dog is calm, I let him have a couple minutes, um, and then I put him away. I don't let the people talk to the dog, pet the dog, um, look at the dog, you know, engage the dog so the dog doesn't get anything out of that. That's really, really important for, for the dog to understand. If you're on a walk, then give the dog something to do. So in other words, if you're walk, somebody's walking up to you, tell the dog, sit. When the dog is sitting, turn and walk away. Teach the dog that that's the behavior you want. If the people start meeting the dog and the dog starts getting in the habit that people are there to meet him, you can end up with another problem. So that's the way I would fix it. Also, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my members-only section at robertcabral.com for lots of dog training lessons and advice.